Next paper is interoperative leak testing has no correlation with leak after a laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy to be presented by Dr. Monica Sethi. This is from New York University. Yes. Hello. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Richards and Dr. Farrell and uh, SAGE's program committee for the opportunity to talk today. I'm going to be talking to you about intraoperative leak testing uh, during laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy. Uh, these are our disclosures, although they have no relevance to our study design or results. So as you all know, staple line leak is a serious complication of laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy. Um, to detect leaks as early as possible, many surgeons employ intraoperative leak tests during the sleeve gastrectomy, and these tests commonly are methylene blue tests and air leak tests. The utility of these tests, however, is controversial. Uh, in fact, the, for, the um, 2012 International Sleeve Gastrectomy Expert Panel only reached a 48% consensus as to whether this test should be performed. Additionally, leak tests are not completely benign. Uh, spilling methylene blue on a patient's skin and hair during surgery can be very difficult to remove. Additionally, uh, malpositioned or misplaced orogastric or nasogastric tubes can lead to mediastinal and pulmonary complications. And there's a lack of scientific studies on the subject. So we chose to evaluate the ability of intraoperative leak tests to detect leaks due to sleeve gastrectomy. And we hypothesized that the, pra the practice of routine intraoperative leak testing is unnecessary during sleeve gastrectomy. This was a retrospective cohort study on prospective, uh, prospectively collected data of seven bariatric surgeons at two NYU affiliated hospitals. Uh, we included all sleeves from uh, 2012 to 2014 with at least 70 days of follow-up. The performance of intraoperative leak testing and the uh, type of test were based on surgeon preference. It was not randomized. And the primary outcome was the leak rate in the leak test group versus the no-leak test group. So we uh, started out with 1,562 sleeves. We excluded 12 for lack of follow-up which left us with 1,550 sleeves. 86% were in the leak test group and 14% in the no leak test group. Of those who had leak tests, 75% had methylene blue tests and 25% had air leak tests and all of the air leak tests were performed with uh, endoscopy. So this is a bar plot of the percent of patients by type of intraoperative leak test, and I'd just like to draw your attention to uh, this bar here, which demonstrates that the amount of methylene blue used during the test varied significantly. In fact, some surgeons used 40 cc's, some surgeons used 150 cc's. It was not at all a standardized test upon review of operative reports. And these are our results stratified by leak test versus no leak test. So intraoperatively, out of 1,329 leak tests, there were zero positive tests. So not a one was positive. Postoperatively, the leak rate of our entire cohort was 1%, and the leak rate did not differ between the leak test group and the non no leak test group. 15 patients of our total cohort developed staple line leaks, um, and as I mentioned, this was 1%. Uh, the mean postoperative days to development of leak symptoms was 17.3 days. Uh, the uh, range was from 1 to 67 days. Two leaks presented, only two of the 15 presented during the index admission, and as I mentioned, the leak tests in those cases were negative as well. Uh, 13 of the leaks were located proximally at the GE junction. The other two were distally, um, a little bit more distal, but they were also at the staple line. Um, and although our, we didn't have a standardized protocol for treating leaks at the time of the study, uh, two patients uh, who presented with leak and were diagnosed by either extrav on a CT or esophagram did go to the operating room for a diagnostic laparoscopy, washout, and drainage. And at the time, we did repeat intraoperative leak testing and despite the presence of a known leak, the leak intraoperative leak test remained negative in both cases. So based on early results of our study, um, four surgeons stopped routinely performing intraoperative leak tests. And uh, without performing a leak test and controlled for a multitude of other factors, including uh, concurrent procedures and removing any open cases, um, we uh, found that their operative time reduced by a mean of 7.6 minutes. So although it may not seem like a lot, um, it actually, based on estimates from our institution, 7.6 minutes of operative time 
plus the cost of supplies required for a methylene blue test specifically equals about $800 per test. And then uh, that means that the total cost of methylene blue tests for our uh, study duration was $847,000. We did look at sensitivity and specificity of the test. Uh, sensitivity was 0%. Uh, specificity was 100% because there were no false positives, um, but the fact that there were zero positive tests out of 1,329 tests and such a low sensitivity really means that the use of this test needs to come into question. So our results uh, demonstrate that intraoperative leak testing has no correlation with leak during sleeve gastrectomy and is not associated with the later development of staple line leak. Therefore, we recommend that rather than routine performance of intraoperative leak testing during sleeve gastrectomy, uh, that surgeons do a more selective approach, such as in cases of uh, intraoperative complications like staple line misfire, revisional surgery, or in practices that have a baseline high leak rate. Thank you very much. Well, people are standing up to uh, ask the questions. I have to congratulate you on a very nicely presented study, and I, in particular, I wanted to commend you for taking out the you know, 12 or 15 patients that you did not have follow-up, because that was really incredibly important. So I congratulate you on that. One of the things about the leak test is maybe your leak testing wasn't very good. In other words, you know, some of us do leak testing with a flexible endoscope and, uh, you know, are able to insulate a little bit more air uh, and identify pro leaks. Is that a possibility? Uh, certainly that's a possibility, but I think our, you know, we had seven surgeons trained in different institutions at different uh, positions in their career. Some used endoscopes, some used methylene blue, and ultimately they weren't positive. And our surgeons conferred with surgeons from other institutions who had have similar findings. Additionally, in the literature, methylene, the, the only mention of this type of stuff is in um, large series uh, on leak. So it's never the main focus, but peripherally people do state that no leak tests were positive or even in the presence of a known leak, the leak test was negative. And I think it has something to do with the pathophysiology of the leaks and the inflammation that is at the leak orifice. And perhaps, you know, when you, you end up with extrav on, a, on a, an esophagram, the, the process, the pressure developed during swallowing may cause some increased extrav there, but we can't create the same amount of pressure, perhaps, during our leak tests. Okay, thank you. Uh, question. Uh, Peter Gorecki from New York. Uh, I like your conclusion, and the question I have is whether anybody on the panel or in the room had a positive leak test on a well-done, perfect, on a staple line. You know, visual inspection is a wonderful thing. If you see the three uh, rows of staple from up down, the chance that you're gonna have a positive leak rate to me is, is close to zero, but I wonder whether there's any opinions on that. I've seen leaks, but like I can count them on one hand. Unlike for gastric bypass, in which about 18% of the time we found some sort of leak uh, with the gastric bypass that we needed to add some extra sutures or things like that. So I agree, during sleeve gastrectomy, it's very rare to have uh, leaks. Okay, thank you very thank you. much. Very nice job.